let's go to the first lightning talk of the afternoon. We have Tom Rhodes from the UK, and we'll talk about some hating relationship with uh, writing regular expressions. Let's find out what happened in this relationship with Tom Rhodes from the UK. Oh, and his first time on stage on a WordCamp, yeah. every WordCamp. So give it up for Tom. Okay. First time on stage. <laughs> Let's get started. Um, show of hands, who's ever wrestled with regular expressions? Brilliant. OK, the other audience I wanted today. So a quick thing about me. My name's Tom Rhodes. I am originally from the north of England, and I currently live in the north of England. So bear with me with the accent. I promise you I'm doing my best. Um, I'm the former lead developer of Thomas Rhodes WordPress themes. If you've ever used any of my themes, I'm sorry. That was a while ago. Since then, I've been through Codable, and I'm currently an engineering lead at Automatic. I work on the WordPress.com special projects team. We manage around 400 active code bases, around 400 stale code, base, code bases. And so being able to pass a project you've seen for the first time is really important to me. And in my opinion, regular expressions do not allow you to do that. But they still do have valid use cases. But those use cases are not passing HTML. So what are, reg what are regular expressions good for? Also, at this point, I'm going to stop saying regular expressions because it's difficult. I'm going to say regex. If you prefer to hear regex, I'm sorry. Your ears are just going to have to bleed for this one. Right, regex. Good for validation, things like email inputs, telephone numbers, making sure things come through in the right format. Good for searching through large volumes of data. You'll notice if you use VS Code. Good for string manipulation, just not HTML, because regular expressions are bad at parsing nested structures, which is exactly what HTML is. You'll find edge cases almost immediately if you think you've crafted the perfect expression. And you've got to remember that WordPress is user input. So the first time someone does something unexpected or a third party plugin does something extremely unexpected, that perfectly crafted expression is going to break. So we need some alternatives. What were the alternatives? I'm sure people have a million different ideas, a million different packages you've used. A couple I previously used, PHP DOM document, which is fine, but has some Pretty interesting quirks. And Symfony DOM crawler, which does what it says. It crawls HTML. It can read HTML. But by its own documentation, it does not write HTML. I can't be the only person that's found myself in this situation, doggedly pushing through with regex when you know there's, there's got to be a better way. Well, there is. There's two classes in WordPress. If you haven't heard about them, I'm hoping that after this talk, you will use them. One is the HTML tag processor. One is the HTML processor. They're named very similarly. So I'm going to refer to them as tag processor and HTML processor now, just to give a little bit of separation. There's no code examples in this. So there's a QR code. There's a link. Go on there. There's some handy links. There's a few little snippets. Drop an issue on that GitHub repo if you want me to give you a new example or answer any questions, or you can just come speak to me. I'm reasonably friendly. OK, the tag processor. This is the one I've used mainly. This is about editing attributes. It allows you to loop through HTML that you add into the class, very similarly to the core post loop. It's a while loop. You can query what tag you're going for. You can add additional queries, like a class name. And so you know when you enter that loop, you're at that specific tag. There's then getters and setters to read, write, remove attributes on the tag that you're working with. And the best thing is, it can even handle broken markup or 
tricky markup. Let's say someone decided to write a tooltip that includes HTML markup inside an attribute. This can handle it, whereas unless you are a regex wizard, in which case, credit to you, I doubt your expression will. The HTML processor, since I'm a little bit short on time, I'm not going to go too deep into this one is also still in active development. I've written up here that it arrived in 6.5. It didn't. It arrived in 6.4. So I'm very detail-oriented, as you can tell. But this one, the HTML processor is better at understanding the structure of the HTML that you've passed in, whereas the tag processor can read things in a linear fashion. This one understands that a link might be a child of a paragraph, and you can query based on that relationship. In the future, this one is going to be able to add and remove HTML nodes, as well as unwrapping and wrapping existing nodes. Quick example, where I've used the tag processor in a project before is filtering the content. A client that wanted all external links to open in a new tab, you've all done this before, run a content filter, spin up the tag processor, loop through the content, and you can, in much more plain English, read and write and set target blanks, rel attributes, really easily. And more importantly, the next person that comes along is going to be able to see what you're doing. Because we all really, we, do, we all do great commenting in our code, right? We all leave spectacular comments every single time. No, so verbose code is always more easy to read. Modifying block output. I know the interactivity API is pretty hot topic this time around at WordCamp, so I'm, you can use, you know, you can hook onto render block. But also note that the interactivity API uses HTML attributes to define its interactivity. So you can rent, you can filter any single block, core, third party, wherever it's come from. You can read what it's doing with interactivity, and you can change it. For example, the uh, navigation block on mobile pops up when you click the hamburger. Change it however you want. And don't rely on writing a regular expression to do that. The future of the HTML processor I have mentioned. There's more stuff coming. I'm going to skip this because, as I said, I thought this was 15 minutes, and it's 10. A quick note about performance. There is a little bit more overhead to invoking a full class than there is to a single string. In my testing of taking a page content, making all of the links target blank, it did take longer to run this class. However, as the page content grows, or if your expressions are not written quite as performantly as you would expect, regex starts slowing down. And so the two meet each other eventually. OK, that's the end of that. Thank you very much for coming. But a quick note before clapping. Thank you, by the way. Um, intro to the HTML API is a workshop that is happening tomorrow. It is by Dennis Snell. He is sat over here. And he was one of the authors of these classes. So everything that I've got spectacularly wrong stood on stage here, he will graciously correct me off. I said 6.5, not 6.4. Anyway, thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, Tom. Cheers. You should do this more often. You're great for, yeah, thank not you. for a first timer. You were, did great. Oh, and we have a special present for you because you deserve it. Thank this you. is a uh, um, memory from your presentation on stage. Okay. It's a book about it Italy and something more. You'll find out. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Tom, everyone. Yeah.